This is the next episode of our cell unit. Um, in this episode, we're going to cover two ideas, prokaryotes versus eukaryotes, and plants versus animals. And these are the two learning targets listed underneath. Um, you can compare and contrast characteristics of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. And secondly, you can compare and contrast characteristics of plant and animal cells. So go and jot that down, and we'll continue. All right, so to start off, uh, I think it's probably a good idea to review um, a little bit about uh, prokaryotes or prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Um, now if you think back to our classification unit, we had two kinds of prokaryotic cells and we had the archaea domain, archaea, ar and our eubacteria domain. Um, for our, I'm going to do this in a slightly different color. For our eukaryotic cells, we had several other kingdoms. We had the protists, we had the fungi, we have the plants, and the animals. So all of these have different kinds of cells, and really what we're going to focus on first is comparing prokaryotes to eukaryotes, and then secondly, plants to animals. Um, obviously, there are other kinds of comparisons that we can make, and uh, I'm going to push you to see if you can t think about how these might be different based on what they do. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about prokaryotic cells first. All right, so... Prokaryotes, pro, there's a couple things we should know. Pro means before or first, and really this is referring to what we believe would be the first kinds of cells. And they're pretty simple, except that they can do lots and lots of things um, that we need lots of cells to do. And we've got several examples of prokaryotic cells, but they fall into the bacteria uh, that we commonly think of as eubacteria or archaeobacteria. And they, I'm just going to, this is going to be a terrible sketch, but um, we've got a bacterial cell, um, and it's got a couple of things in it that are quite interesting. Inside of it, we've got uh, DNA, remember all living cells have DNA. So we've got some free floating DNA, um, and this is called a nucleoid. Sorry about that. Let me spell that. Um, a nucleoid. Um, and we've got ourselves some cytoplasm. And a cell membrane. But that DNA, this nucleoid, this DNA, um, also needs to be able to get out and uh, be read and so there are in this bacterial cell or prokaryotic cell some ribosomes that are going to read that the code from the DNA um, and turn it into proteins that the bacteria need. Now sometimes uh, sometimes there is kind of a cell wall around the bacteria sometimes not all the time and sometimes there are little hairs which are called uh, one of them is called a cilium but usually that's not the case if we've got lots of them it's called cilia for those Latin um, Latin friends of ours, uh, they're called cilia, but sometimes there's yet another structure that um, is like a little tail on the end, and this is called a flagellum. Sometimes there's more than one, and if there's more than one, it's called flagella. 
Um, and flagella are little whip-like things that propel the bacteria in a direction. The cilia are little hairs that kind of um, flutter moving that cell in a sl slower pace. But there are very few things that uh, you bet that sorry prokaryotes have. Compar comparatively, we've got our eukaryotes, which have a lot, a little more to them. Eukarya um, refers to what it really means is true kernel, which refers to the nucleus. So uh, I'm not going to draw myself that I had before on a previous uh, video, but the eukaryotes have all those other organelles. So they have many what we call membrane bound organelles. So they've got lots of stuff going on that have special jobs and help the eukaryotic cells be efficient and oftentimes more efficient than the prokaryotic cells. Um, if prokaryotes came first, we think that eukaryotes came second or later um, and we'll turn, talk a little bit about that later in the uh, about when we talk about the endosymbiotic theory. Um, Alright, so let's go and talk about plants and animals which are both eukaryotic kinds of cells. All right, so let's talk about animal. Sorry, let's. I guess let's talk about plants first. That's probably a little bit better. Um, so let's talk about plants, and then we're going to talk about. I can spell animals. Animals. So plants um, have many of the same organelles that animals do, but plants, as opposed to animal cells, have a couple of special organelles. One of them is the cell wall. Now we said that the prokaryotic cells or the bacteria, some of them have cell walls, but no animals have cell walls. Um, plants do, and this provides them the structure so that things like trees, which don't have a skeleton, can stand up straight. It's kind of like bricks that are stacked on top of each other. Um, and the other thing, uh, another thing that they have that animals don't is called the chloroplast. And this is what really makes them producers or autotrophs because they make their own food through the process of photosynthesis, which we're going to talk a little about uh, a little later, um, to make sugar, which then gets uh, stored in a special way as cell walls or starch to be used later. Um, and then lastly, Plants have a large central vacuole, which is really important for them because they store water in it. Remember, plants can't really move very fast, so when they need water to do photosynthesis, uh, they need to get that resource pretty quickly. And so each plant cell has a pretty large central vacuole that stores that water for them. All right, so let's talk about uh, unique things about animals. Um, Animals obviously don't have a cell wall, they don't have chloroplasts, they don't have a large central vacuole. Um, but what is pretty unique to animals is that they have, that we have, sorry, um, cytoskeletons. These are not like our bones, but these are fibers within our cells that help them move. Remember, plants don't move, animals do. So this allows us to move a little bit. Um, also, we have things called lysosomes. Now, ant plants have something else, but uh, for, for the ones that we've talked about, lysosomes are uh, the ones we've mentioned, and animals have lysosomes. And that's pretty much it that we've talked about that is unique to plants and animals. Everything else that we would put in the middle um, between these would be all those other organelles um, that we wrote down for the cell organelle podcast, okay? So let's go back and see if um, if you can um, meet both of these. Sorry about that. If you can hit both of these um, targets, then you're set to go. Um, and that wraps it up.